Alright, everyone, settle down now. Hello, travelers. This is Professor Black. Welcome to Invocation Academy's TCG 101 series, where we'll learn various TCG concepts through easy-to-understand 10-minute lessons. Our goal is to turn you from a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck into a genius Invocation champion. In the last lesson, we covered common deck building mistakes, and if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do. Well, now that you've improved your deck, it's time to get better at playing it. So today, we'll look at five common gameplay mistakes that new players tend to make. Starting off with mistake number one, probably the most important, not using up all your dice every round. If you've ever taken the time to go back and look at some of your games, you may notice that the winner is often simply the player who has used more skills throughout the game. Which sounds obvious, more skills is more damage. But while that feels like it comes down to RNG of the dice, if you play against an experienced player, the reason why they get to use more skills is usually because one, their deck is more streamlined to use dice more effectively, and they play in a way that maximizes this as well. For example, if you often find yourself ending your rounds with one or two dice left unused, over several rounds this really starts to add up. This is why it's important not to underestimate one cost cards, as they're particularly important letting you spend those last few dice without letting them go to waste. One important consideration is that you get 8 dice per round, which if you look at it is only enough for 2 skills most of the time. If you waste those 2 leftover dice, then next round you're still going to only have 8 dice and 2 skills. But you'll notice if you can find a way to carry those dice forward with you into the next round, well now you have 10 dice to work with the next round which is an additional skill. This is exactly what ramp does and why it's so important for a lot of decks, playing cards like Vanarana, Liban, and Paimon. All of which help you use more skills and use up your dice better at each round. And okay, what about rounds where you roll so bad and can't use any skills at all? Well, one thing to keep in mind is not to neglect normal attacks. While they are usually worse than skills, the key point here is using up all your dice is often better than not using them at all. Even with no usable die, tuning two cards to just perform two normal attacks can be better than maybe trying to go for tuning three to just get one skill out and letting the remaining dice go to waste. Of course, as you get more advanced, there will be times where it's correct to float dice, meaning ending the turn without using them up. But that's very much an exception to the rule, and as a newer player, focus first and foremost on finding ways to use up all your dice every round, and try to set up more than two skills in a single round when possible. Closely related to that is mistake number two, using dice inefficiently. Simply using up all your dice isn't going to be enough if you're not putting them to good use. The most common trap here for newer players is equipment, particularly three cost ones. These have very powerful effects, but will often need time to generate value, which you don't always have when your opponent is also beating you down with their own skills. Choosing to spend your valuable dice on these at the wrong time is an easy way to have these dice go for little effect. Weapons in particular are very easy to overestimate. At 3 dice, they cost you 1 entire skill, which for most characters are going to equal 4 value, with 3 damage with an elemental application. So in order for your weapon equipped to be worth it, it needs to have provided more benefit than that additional skill. This is why you'll notice weapons with very narrow conditional buffs like the Skyward series are almost never played. It's just really hard to have their effect be worth their cost. Conversely, weapons you'll see played very often, like Wolf's Gravestone or Tule Tula, both provide very good immediate value and quickly. So next time, before equipping anything, always ask yourself if you have enough time to make use of the equipment, and if not, it may just be better off playing a different action card or even just going for a skill. Mistake number three, always choosing to take out a character whenever the opportunity arises. This one can be particularly confusing for new players. After all, you win by defeating all of your opponents, right? So the faster you get it down, the better. Well, not necessarily. Because your opponent gets to choose a new active character when one is defeated, this can sometimes work against you by giving them the opportunity not only to swap to another character without spending a dice, but also not take up an action. One small thing you can try is to start paying attention to your opponent's dice. If they are on exactly 3 and have a character in range of lethal, think about whether taking that character out will give them a chance to go onto another character and use a better skill. If you have spare dice yourself, you can consider swap stalling here. This forces your opponent either to use a dice on perhaps a less effective skill, or they may just spend a dice to swap, which means they can no longer use another skill again. If you want to learn more about swap stalling, make sure to check out the TCG 101 on passing the turn. You might also end up dealing a lot of your damage on unimportant support characters, where you should be saving your damage and dice for others. One example of this is Raiden. After deploying her summon and burst, Raiden uses up a lot of her utility. Against decks that rush for Raiden burst, you often have an opportunity to actually take her out right after she uses her burst, but it's often a mistake as it plays right into your opponent's plan, allowing them to swap to their next character and burst right away, saving them not only a die but an action. Instead, it may be better simply to swap yourself onto another character and force your opponent to do the swap themselves, saving your damage to threaten more important targets. 
This applies more generally to any character that doesn't want to skill twice, so summon characters like Fischl or characters that play a status like Charlotte. Think twice before taking them out. The same goes for using cards like Tandori or Adeptus too early. Throwing them at the first target you see ends up being a pretty significant dice investment and usually means you're not able to threaten any remaining characters, giving your opponents the complete freedom to play the rest of their turn how they want. Decks that play these cards often want to save them to surprise specific characters in the opposing deck. Of course, learning which characters are important in each matchup is something you'll get with some experience. Mistake number four, one we've all run into, auto dice. If you're not sure what this is, you might notice when playing or tuning cards, the game will automatically select dice for you to use, making sure to first use up off element die where possible before dice of your character's elements, which is great most of the time. There's two very common situations where you may not want to do this, and that's if you have Liban or any aligned cost equipment, particularly three cost weapons or artifacts. For example, here you can see we have pretty bad dice. Our best play here is probably to normal attack and play Liban. However, because we have Ashtaha on our team, the normal attack will by default try to use up the Dendro and Animo die, which leaves us with three Geo, which Liban will not take. Instead, we need to make sure to manually select the two Geo die here to use for our normal attack, which leaves us perfectly with three elements for Liban. The other time this comes up is with Equipment and Omni die. In this example, if we were to just use Layla's skill immediately, we eat up both of our Omnis, which would leave us without any triple elements to equip our Tenacity, which would really mess up our turn. Instead, here we should tune first, so that our skill only uses up one Omni die, and then afterwards we can equip Tenacity using two Geo and the remaining Omni. Now, you might be thinking, there's an easy way to fix this, right? I just play the equipment first, so I don't have to think about this. Well, that's a pretty valid point, and you can definitely do this, but this does bring up to our fifth and final point, mistake number five, playing ramp or equipment too early. Many players do this just to avoid accidentally using the wrong dice or having to think too hard about planning out their turn. However, this is a pretty bad habit to learn. While it is certainly making it easier for you to plan your own turn, by playing these cards early, you're also making it easier for your opponent to play their turn by giving away valuable information. The less dice you have available, the less your opponent has to play around. So in our last example, you could pre-equip Tenacity before using Layla skill and avoid messing up your dice, but this also tells your opponent you don't have any dice left for another skill and are going to pass. They also know that you have a Tenacity which they can factor into your plans for the next turn. So for cards that aren't going to have an immediate effect when played, like Paimon or certain equipment, get into the habit of holding onto them until the very last moment. You might catch your opponents off guard by ending earlier than expected, letting you keep priority, and sometimes it may even force your opponents to swap around unnecessarily to play around your potential dice. It might seem like a minor detail, but as you play against more skilled opponents, it really starts to add up. TCGs, after all, are a lot about hidden information, and the less you give away, the better. Just like with deck building, there's a lot more depth to some of these points, but hopefully we've touched on some pretty common mistakes that perhaps you now recognize and can fix from time to time. If you've noticed a common pattern to these tips, a lot of them have to do with slowing down and making sure you plan your entire turn ahead. While there is certainly a lot of RNG on the surface, at its heart, TCGs are strategy games and reward those who plan several moves ahead. If you want to see these concepts put into practice, make sure to drop by the Duelist Theatre for deck guides and gameplay. If there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video, drop a comment and I'll see how I can help. Be sure to enroll in our courses by subscribing so you can be notified when a new lesson is available. Until then, class dismissed!